in control. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. We want to thank God right now for our precious leaders, none other than Bishop Frederick David Patterson Sr., the angel of this house, and his sweet, lovely wife, Her Grace Dorothy Patterson. After the music ministry, the next speaking voice you shall hear shall be that of our bishop. Let's give him a hand, everybody in the room. God bless you.
thermometer, but a thermostat. But right now, I want to let you know that I'm both. And so far, heaven is telling me, if I don't feel it, heaven don't feel it. Oh, come on here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't play me down. If heaven don't feel it, I don't feel it. Well, I don't feel it because heaven don't feel it. And you know when heaven feels it because when heaven feels it and I feel it, it will radiate. It will move. Uh, his praise, his, your sincere, sincere praise. Yeah, see, we, we busy. But we, we all have joy that sweet wine didn't give at the Christmas party. We all have joy that gives strength. Because in the midst of, amen, in the midst of somebody having joy, there's still somebody that's just sharing and sorrow and death that's still when our beloved families amen this and several others down through the past year or a few months and you don't get over death y'all need to stop all this mess talking about it. you don't understand if it hits you right you find that it's more than understanding you have to be able to stand heartbroken but you have to know learn how to stand one of these days, it's going to be your test. You find out when you walk in somebody else's shoes, you, you, you find out. How to think it won't get it done all the time. And knowing the Lord is my shepherd don't mean that you have, you have to learn not to want. And you learn that even Jesus wept. So stop downing one another talking about why you walking looking like that. Amen. Come on, hear this. You don't know. We sing the song, you don't know what, like I know what he does for me. But sometimes you had anybody written as you don't know what, like I know what the devil, y'all. I was talking to someone in business, they was, and I just got off the phone listening to two or three problems, severe problems among the congregation because I was walking in, meditating, trying to figure out what can I do. He come bring me up. Why are you walking like that? I told him, I said, forget all that positive thing. and said, I don't have time to tell you, amen. I'm just meditating, thinking, amen. Sometimes things get heavy. Sometimes, uh, sometimes we all get discouraged and wonder if I work in vain, but then the Holy Ghost. I don't mean I feel like quitting. I don't mean my faith has failed, but sometimes we wonder. What time, when, how? I, 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 I know I'm going to make it up, but how and when and where? Uh, and how long? Hey, Lord. It looks like intellect it should have been yesterday, but I'm still hoping. I have faith that you're going to do it. Faith means I know you can, but will you? I hope you will do it just for me. Just just show yourself one more time. I know I had nothing happened to my faith. Faith means I know you still can do it. You can stop the storm. You can stop the fire from burning me. I hope you will. But if it doesn't happen today, I'll wait until my change comes. Yeah. There's going to be a time we're all going to find out our gold need to be purified a little bit more. Our silver need to be shined up a little bit more. Yeah. The blackness of some of us, you know, a lot of diamonds, if you look at them under a microscope, 10 point loop, even though it's shining and hurting someone's eyes, if you look at it close enough, man, you'll see some little pieces of black coal in there called inclusions. You'll see little black pieces called inclusion. Sometimes they're just crystal, which means that 
I don't care if we are a diamond and a gem in the Lord's ring. Sometimes there's still a little bit of black coal in there that didn't quite make it. And the Lord is still working on. Look at somebody say, the Lord's still working on me. But still my soul, it really, really loves Jesus. I also, I, 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 I really love, I really love the Lord. I also love Jesus. Yes, I, I, I do. Just. You can join if you want to, but just between me and him. My, hey, I'm not trying to entertain you. I, my soul really loves my Jesus. Oh, 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 my soul really loves the Lord. I'm gonna do like Ed. I can't say I can't stand your face. My soul really loves Jesus. I wish I could get somebody to say, yeah, 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 yes. I do. I love I don't get tired. I long to please him. I, 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 I long to please him. Yes, 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 I do. I, I, Maybe you don't realize, but I stay on the front line, and the word from the front line is that we in the warfare. The devil did not give up, even at Christmas time, 1960 something. The world, the devil himself, politically. The Satan set up in high places. Diabolos. The shrewd one. The slanderer. The devil. The enemy of God. Worn around and said no more prayer in school. Uh, and there's still. It was why you read about a school teacher who wore a cross to school. He'd been wearing a cross to school, and all of a sudden, someone complained. And they asked her to take it off, or else she's going to lose her job. People are asked not to say, I pledge allegiance, and put God's name in there. But you ought not want to pledge no allegiance to a country that refuses, going to turn their back on God. 
You know, it's very impolite just to walk up. It would be very impolite for my children. I'm their father and their daddy. Then just walk up and just start talking to me. Don't say daddy, just say I want. Amen. Never say father, never say daddy, but just say I want. Amen. And that's what we're being asked to do. Just walk up to God and say, God, we want protection in Iraq. We want you to keep, I hope they know that if Jehovah Nisai, our banner, our fortress, if he doesn't wave his hand, we don't have to worry about Iraq, Iran, their sister Amen. country will jump in there, y'all. Ain't hear me? Amen. And I want us to realize that this day and time that people are fighting, and I wonder how many people have Men made to preach like Paul, sing like angels. But you ought to have the testimony. I told somebody, yeah. I let somebody know, look at here. As far as I'm concerned, Christ is still the reason for this season. I mean, I mean, how, how many put that in their mouth this several times? Come on here. And you still got time, amen. I'm scared to say anything. Well, you're on your way to hell. Because the Bible did say in the book of Revelation, the fearful. The scaredy cats. It talked about the dogs and the sorcerers in the book of Revelation, the last book. Talked about the dogs, the sorcerers, those, that, that's those witchcraft people, and that's those drug people. The drug culture. Pharmacias. Said they shall have, and the fornicating adulterers and the idols, they shall have their part in hell. And the fear for them scaredy cats. Shame is ashamed is just another word for a scaredy cat. I said ashamed. I just didn't say nothing. Well, uh -huh. if somebody doesn't speak up, Amen. they're asking the president and Congress because someone is trying to pass a bill where. The Christian chaplains overseas in warfare trying to pass a decree where they said the Christian chaplains cannot pray in the name of Jesus. I don't understand why any chaplain out there on the battlefield that is made, you know, they are officers. They not know they're captains. And with the Army or Navy or Marines on this side and God on this side. 39 books of the Old Testament, 27 of the New. Why would any chaplain in the midst of bullets and Arabs and death refuse to let somebody know that I don't care what nobody said. They just have to leave the United States and I will go back and, and break. The other thing, or is the United States going to get so wicked that they're going to call chaplains in? Because I heard that you said Jesus' name. All, the, all of our lives say, bring me home and see what's going to happen over here. When, when they see we don't have nobody praying. And bring me home, court martial me. I'll die for the faith. This is the warfare. I'm going to have them read some scriptures that ought to be elementary to us, but I want to know that at this time, at Christmas time, we as a people ought to be very proud about the fact that Jesus Christ was born laid in a manger. The Catholic Church knows that there is such a thing as the Black Madonna. In Chicago, once a year, the people, the Polish people have a parade and they have a big stature of a dark brown Mary and Jesus in the parade. I was in a bookstore out on Jonestown Road and it's a Greek bookstore. And uh, I went in there one day and they have all kind of pictures of a dark brown Jesus and dark brown disciples, him on the cross, him being born, him laying out in the tomb. 
And I asked him, where did all these pictures of a dark brown chocolate Jesus and chocolate Mary had all the disciples dark chocolate brown? They said, these are excerpts. These are representatives of pictures that were painted in the Greek catacombs years ago. These are examples that to, in the Greek church. In the catacombs, every picture that was painted on the wall where the Christians were high, they always made Jesus clap their hand and say, he must have looked like me. <laughs> Somebody knows, amen, amen. And so here we are. If anybody ought to say, thank Jesus that he brought me <laughs> from Africa so I could find out how to worship him. Yo, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just as the Israelites were glad, they sang the, and you mean, we were, so the way we were singing the call of the spiritual, how did you feel when you came out of the wilderness? We realized it wasn't just a Hebrew song about coming out of Egypt when we came out of slavery. I'm going to have them read some scriptures. Uh, we're going to try to preach to you about why. The virgin birth, Amen. a seemingly contradictory term, mm. a virgin birth. They're going to read Isaiah 7 and 14, Isaiah 9 and a few verses out of the sixth chapter, ninth chapter. You ought to write these down. And some are going to read a verse from Genesis, the third chapter, and verse, about verse 16. And some of them are going to read a verse from 1 Corinthians 15. And we're going to try to, if you'll stick with me, I ask you all to go to the bathroom and drink. And uh, uh, I know some may have a medical condition, but I'm, not, I'm talking about these here recreational people. Amen. I need to usher on that. About the mule. He said uh, there was a farmer out plowing. Y'all permit me to be a sinner a little while. And uh, he had a great big field to plow, and he had one mule. And he said, he said, come on, Bobo, get up. Come on, uh, Fuju, get up. Come on, Jojo, get up. Come on, ZZ, get up. And the man looked and said, you don't have but one mule. Why are you calling all them different names? He said, well, he'll plow much better when he feels like he's got help. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, give me a little help this morning. Right, no, that's <laughs> Stan, we're going to start with Genesis 3 and 15 and 16. Then Isaiah 7 and 14. Then Isaiah 9 and 6. Then 1 Corinthians 15, 21 and 22. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Isaiah 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Yes. And his name shall be called Wonderful, mm -hmm. Counselor, yes. the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, yes. the Prince of Peace. In 1 Corinthians 15, 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. 
For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Amen. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to his red word. And I wish that you would uh, bear with me the most important part of Christianity, the fact that Jesus Christ not only died a supernatural and abnormal death, but it's a reality historical fact that there was a man named Jesus. And though there were many people named Jesus, or Joshua in the Hebrew, when the angel Gabriel named, said, name him Jesus, because he shall be a savior, a deliverer. Yeah. Uh, this Jesus, the only time that anybody that was a virgin conceived and had a child. Yeah. In a day when there were no test tube babies, it was not an accidental slip up of playing around in different kind of sex and a stray semen or got down there. No playing around. Uh, Buddha cannot name, cannot claim that he was born of a virgin. Virgin, virgin, someone who had had no kind of sex with the opposite sex. And it's important that we realize that we need to tell our children that Joseph was just a stepfather, a surrogate father. Amen. Come on in. I mean, hearing the children talking about Joseph was his father. You ought to let them know. No, no, no. They ought to say stepfather or surrogate father. He was substitute father. Amen. And we're going to see he had a dilemma when this virgin bride. Yeah. Uh, I know it seems strange to some of you to virgin where you get that word from that's outdated English virgin someone who hasn't had no kind of sex no Amen. out of course or intercourse Amen. we got stupid people now they do everything except one way and claim they they put it everywhere but in the proper place and then claim it's out of course uh -huh. amen but Mary probably 16 or 17 years old, met a man in her own tribe. And Jews, Jewish women, had read what the Bible had to say. Uh, at the time that Jesus came on the scene, the 39 books of the Old Testament had been translated. They had 400 years which they knew that God was no longer speaking to no Elijahs, no Elishas, no, 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 no Moseses, no Habakkuk's, no Malachi's, no Nahum's, no Jonah's, no Zephaniah, no Zacharias, no Isaiah, no Jeremiah, no Daniel's. And so they had had the Hebrew Bible translated in the Greek language so that all the world could understand. And they knew from the beginning that God was going to send through the Jewish race a savior, a deliverer, a messiah, a leader, someone to free them. And they were very conscious at the time that Jesus came into the world that at any time we need freedom, we need freedom. We, you, you think it was bad when we were under slavery. They were under, the, the whole world was, not just one race, the whole world. The whole known world was in slavery under the Romans, very cruel people, very powerful people. They had police stations set up on every corner. They had everything in control. And here, Jesus came in the midst. And they had been, for years, they had been looking for a savior, a deliverer. Not a Santa Claus, but a deliverer. Someone to bring them out of captivity. So to bring them out of economic captivity, the taxes were so high and they were being threatened on every side. Everywhere they looked, there was a Roman soldier with a sword and a spear ready to kill one of them. Yeah. If they did wrong according to not their law, 
They had a problem getting Jesus crucified because the Romans had taken away their, they could not kill anybody unless they wanted to be killed too. So they had to appeal to the Romans to help them out. They had to get permission from Pilate, from Herod, and from Caesar to kill Jesus. Or else they would have been all in jail. Or they would have been killed by the Roman soldiers. Now here, a virgin. From the time of Genesis, the first book, it said, you know what I'm The seed of woman. God promised even in Adam, Adam, ladies, fellas, is on us. The Bible says that through one man, Adam, sin and death, sin took over. And the wages of sin is death. It was Adam's fault. Oh, we need a uh, uh, whooped. I ain't going to say the other word. Whooped up. I ain't going to use the other word. Oh, whooped up. Whooped up, talking about, well, God, you gave me one piece, and like, ain't, ain't no Steve around, ain't another Eve, and so come on, right. oh, whooped up. Amen. Eve was deceived, but the Bible said Adam should have stood his ground. Yes. He the man. Amen. He's going to say, well, if you go, I got to go too. And the Bible says, through one man, sin entered the world, and through one man, death into the world. And so Jesus and it said, that's all right, Eve. That's it. God is going to speak to the female gender. Amen. Somewhere along the line, one of you in, in fullness of time, in due season, yes. and every God gets ready. Yes. Hmm. Yes. He's going to touch. Yes, he He's going to leave Adam out because men, we, we, we carry the gene, the, we carry the sin chromosome. Yes. If you study genetics, there's an extra chromosome, and the men contributed to it. And God is going to bypass us, and bypass Adam's sons, and may in touch the ovary of a woman. And God, that's why he was called Emmanuel, God Jr., God with us. The DNA, the fatherhood DNA was God himself and Mary. So that he was very God and very man. Absolutely wound together. You couldn't tell where one ended and one together. And he came, now it was necessary in order that he would be sinless. From the time he was born, he was sinless. And our job is to get enough Holy Ghost, enough Holy Spirit. Get enough of He, the Holy Ghost. He's called the Holy Spirit because God is Spirit and God is Holy. And when we allow it, we sit up here and don't want nothing but the water. Some of you don't even want the water. But you got to have, be baptized. You must be born again of the water and the Spirit. You need a part of God in you. You need the fullness of God to live right. I don't care how old you are. Whatever it is, somebody's got... In this day and time, the devil is after all of us. And he is tempting all of us. And all of us have at least two or three sit out besetting sins. Weights that we need. You know, they hear me. That you can run much better. Serve the Lord much better if you lay aside all these here weights. The reason some of you so slow getting to church, you weighted down. The TV got you weighted down. Luxury got you weighted down. Your fast car got you weighted down. Your shiny... You, you got to take so much time putting on your shiny bling bling that you're late. Got too much time for shining your car you late. Got too much time that your, 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 your Sealy Pastor Peter got, 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 got built in, your recliner got built in seat belts, and you don't know how to get them loose. And then, then the devil working on you done worked all week long and Sunday morning. You get up and go to the job every day because you got to make a little bit. You know, but Sunday morning, I don't feel like y'all. Jesus didn't feel like dying on the cross, but I'm so glad he died. See, you spending this time buying. He, you went out to buy. Jesus came to die. You went out to buy celebrating the Christ time, but Jesus came to die. Born of a virgin. Born absolutely 
pure. That's the reason the theologians tell you that it took somebody who had no sin chromosome in him. He had never thought wrong or did wrong because Abraham could not be called up and be sent to die for the world because he had told some lies, some little gray lies. No, just got drunk one time. No, wasn't a drunk, but he got drunk one time. Stop talking about he was a drunk. He got drunk one time. Yes, he, did. he couldn't go. Amen. Jeremiah cried too much, and Jeremiah was a quitter. Yes, Jeremiah one time quit on God. Yes, he did. said, I'm tired of yes, telling these folks and ain't nothing happening. That's it. I'm going to sit down and hold my peace. I ain't going to say nothing to them no more. That's what he said. All of a sudden, he jumped up. Start preaching. Say, I had to get up off my seat and do nothing. Because the word of God was like fire. Yeah. Set up in my bones. Yeah. And I got you talking about a hot foot. He got a hot seat. Yeah. He had to, get up. had to get up. Whether you like it or don't like it. I got to tell you. Yeah. It's either heaven or hell. Yeah. You must get the right church so you can go home. Right. Couldn't find nobody. But Jesus said before the founding of Israel, if you make me a body, and he that was with God and was God, not a God, I'm sorry about these here people who call themselves a witness who mistranslate the first verse of John. The Greek said, I am a Greek scholar. I do have some degrees. I'm not a third grade dropout talking about A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I wonder what you think of me. I We did study some eschatology. We did study some sortiology. We did study some ecclesiology, some archaeology. Have a real BA and a spiritual BA. Been born again and have a secular BA. Have a master's. But most of all, I know the master of the universe. I don't have no BS degree, so I ain't on the BS stuff. I do know what the word of God said. We're not up here listening to what the TV said. I walk with him. I talk with him. He, he tells me I'm his own. He tells me. He explains some of the deep mysteries. Born of a virgin. And Isaiah said 700 years. said, it's never been heard of but a virgin girl. Yeah. And the word that was used meant not only a virgin, but a virgin woman that was engaged to be married. Amen. If you study Jewish history, the reason that Joseph at one time said, Mary, we engaged. We've been knowing each other since we were small and they had, in Jewish time, you went and took a marriage ceremony, exchanged two cups of wine and put on the ring, and then the bride went back home to her brother or sister or older people, and the man had to get the house ready and everything ready. Now, the biggest thing was they wanted to sit together in time enough to be sure that when they did come together as husband and wife, the Bible says that Joseph, when he received the word from the angel, he did not know Amen. Mary. She was a virgin when she conceived Jesus, and he respected that so much that he did not bother her, even though legally she was his wife. But see, in that day, the reason that Joseph said, engage, marry his expot with his engage, which meant that the only way that they, listen here now, only in that day you could break the engagement was to get a divorce. They had taken their vow before the Lord. Now y'all, them vows don't mean nothing. Amen. But in the engagement part, before they came together, before they had the honeymoon, yes. before they were joined together in one flesh, yes. and here comes Mary. The angel spoke to her, and she came and told Joseph, said, it didn't went this way because Mary, all the Jewish girls were looking at the time and said, the Bible says in Genesis, that one of these days, a virgin is going to get pregnant. Amen. 
And then he said, in Isaiah, he made it very plain. Genesis said, the seed of woman, Isaiah said, behold, a virgin that's engaged to be married, that's engaged and is technically married, is going to get pregnant, but she's going to still be a virgin. And his daddy shall be God because that's why he's called Emmanuel. God in. God down here with us. And Mary heard the angel. And in a few weeks she said, I got to get some evidence. I feel the morning sickness. My period has stopped and my stomach is beginning to swell, and I knew I hadn't done no playing around, but I don't know how I'm going to tell my husband, who is already my husband, when he comes to get me, that I'm pregnant. And so she went to see her cousin, Elizabeth, uh, and, and she found out that Elizabeth, with her old self and her old husband, before Viagra had been invented, right. Zachariah's a priest. Right. The Lord came and spoke to Zachariah yeah. one day while he was uh, in, in the pulpit, uh, burning incense and praying to God. The angel spoke to him and said, I'm going to do something for you. You always wanted a child. I'm going to see that you have a child. I want you to name him John. And, and Zachariah said, oh, my goodness. How is how this going to be? Did you tell, did you tell my wife? Because she's going to wonder what in the world wrong with me all of a sudden, my, my old self saying, let's make a baby. And he said, well, just because you don't believe it, I'm going to strike your mouth and you have to write it out for her. So you will not be able to speak until the baby's born. But he went by, he didn't have to say nothing. Somehow or another, he waved something. They began to do the thing. And Elizabeth's in old age, found herself pregnant. Here come Mary stepping up one day. She said, an angel spoke to me and told me I'm going to have a child. It's interesting, he said, unto us a son is given, not a girl. Looks like if the seed of woman, are you still with me? Look like with the seed of woman, she would have had a daughter. But God really, God why do you think that's so hard for God? That God made an Adam and an Eve. God made a man and a woman. Didn't want neither one of them had a father or a mother. Somebody named God, not a scientist, started the whole human race without an egg and without any sperm. So it's easy for God to work with just an egg. Y'all didn't hear me. I don't know who was first, the egg or the chicken. The chicken was first. Because God made a chicken. They wasn't hatched out. Adam and Eve were not birthed. They were born grown. The same God. There's nothing too hard for God. God made the science different. God made gravity for us to discover. God made the laws of inertia of physics. God made dynamics and taught us how to fly. God no. made it possible. God no. created the planet. God no. didn't talk about a big bang. You can, when you hear a big bang, you know two cars must have had a wreck out there. When you hear a big bang, ain't nothing been created, something been destroyed. You hear a big bang, must be a bomb went off. Something been, every time we hear a big bang, that means something been destroyed. How can we be so crazy? To think that a big bang created every time I know about a big bang, somebody, yeah. something been destroyed. Yeah. Big bang. It's a big lie. God just thought it. And Jesus, who was in the heart of God, nothing was made that was made without him, the word, the Logos. And here he is. She went and said, Girlfriend, how far you look like you? You out there? And she said, yeah, yeah, I'm. She said, I'm six months. And when she said that, and she said, you know, this is a miracle. <laughs> I'm 65, and Zachariah 75, and and, uh, and and I am pregnant and doing fine. 
And at that time, the boy child, John the baptizer, started dancing in her womb. Her stomach started boom, boom, boom. The baby didn't kick. The baby started dancing. You could have looked. The stomach started bouncing. And then she was filled with the Holy Ghost. They both grabbed hands. Now, y'all talk about shouting when Mary and Elizabeth got together and the Holy Ghost fell on them. And they shouted and danced and sang the songs of praise. And Mary stayed three months before she went back. So when she came back and finally told Joseph, I'm pregnant, it was very obvious that she was pregnant. Nine months, didn't have very far to go. And here is poor Joseph. Are you for here, poor Joseph? Mary, what? Girl. And according to the law, they were married according to the law. And he was a righteous man, so he was supposed to divorce her. But he said, I, I, I don't understand, girl. I, I, don't, I don't understand. But, I, 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 but I'm not going to shame you. I, I'm going to speak to somebody on the sand head. I'm supposed to have them write out the bill of divorce and have you stand in the public square. But I'm not, I'm going to talk to some, one of the rabbis and say, look here, can I just hand this to her? Say, I don't want to make this public. I love her too much. I don't understand. I don't know if she, if she cracked up or if she got raped and scared to tell me, but I don't understand. But he was willing to, he said, I, I can't. I got to be righteous. So he was going to give her a divorce. They were engaged, but according to their engagement, the only way they could break it was through a divorce. Amen. And then the same angel yes. that Amen. spoke to Zacharias, Amen. the same angel Amen. that spoke to her cousin Elizabeth, the same angel Amen. came and stood beside, that stood beside the Virgin Mary. Amen. The same angel came and said, Joseph, yes. Joseph, yes. it's good to know that that's God. He knew he was not having hallucinations. He knew that there was an angel. And an angel said, fear not. Don't be scared of what people are going to say. Marry her. You have been chosen and she had been chosen from the time you was born. To bring a savior, which is Christ the Lord. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. His name shall be called Mighty God. His name shall be called Prince of Peace. His name, he shall have the government on his shoulders. A government so strong that the Roman Empire cannot destroy him. A government so strong that the spears and swords of the Caesars a government so strong that he shall be like the stone hewed out of the mountain. His kingdom shall destroy every other kingdom. Daniel said, I saw a stone hewed out the mountain. It had Jesus' name on it, and it came rolling down. I saw this stone named Jesus. I saw it smashed. The Babylonian Empire. I saw this stone crush Alexander Great uh, that conquered the whole known world. I saw this stone kill Alexander the Great at the age of 33. I saw this stone at the age of 23. I saw Alexander the Great sitting down crying. Because he had no more, no more worlds to conquer. But at the age of 33, the stone crushed him. And he died at the age of 33 from syphilis. The stone kept on rolling. He said, this stone is going to crush the Roman Empire. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Talk about the rolling stone. He keeps on rolling. I know he's alive. I know he's real. Cause every now and then, I feel that the wheel, that Ezekiel saw a turning. Every now and then, I, I, I feel the fire burning. Every now and then, 
I know he's alive. I know he was born and I know he rose. I'm glad that he came to die. Yeah. What did he do for me? He gave me the gift of grace. It was amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. It was amazing grace that saved a snake like me. It was amazing grace that reached down in Indianapolis, Indiana, at the age of 11 and saved a black boy like me. That's the gift that he gave me. And then, I got to leave, and then I'm here today at 78. He gave me, he died to give me life abundantly. That means I should be walking slow. I should be on a cane, but I gave my life to him and I have abundant life. An overflow of life. Yeah. He gave me to her. He gave her to me. He gave those children. That's my gift. He gave me the gift of healing. Gave me the gift of cast nothing. I'm so glad. There ain't no such thing if I don't get nothing for Christ. Every day. Every day. Every day is a good day. Every day. Hey, hey, hey. Every day. The storm may blow, but it's still a mighty good day. The fire may burn, but it's still a mighty good day. They may talk about me, but it's still a mighty good day. I'm gonna leave you all alone. I feel like running. Understand. At Thanksgiving time, on Thanksgiving Day, they claim they had a Macy's Day Christmas parade. If somebody in the name of money, New York City, could have dancers and bands, y'all ain't hearing me. And, and, and what's on there bigger than Mickey Mouse's and, and floats and, and have an hour 
and a half parade. <laughs> 30 days before. That's all right. And, and Mamba always looks at me. She don't care nothing about the Mickey Mouses and the what the Tweety Birds and she waiting for the Rockettes to come by. Come on. One of these old days. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna leave y'all alone. I'm dancing my Christmas in. I'm not looking for every day to be Sunday. I'm looking for every day to be Christmas. I need, I need a Christmas gift to continue to pay my mortgage. I need a Christmas gift to continue to give my wife and I good health and strength. I need a Christmas gift every day. When you gonna get the Lord his gift? When you gonna return? When you gonna get the Lord a gift? A gift of praise? A gift of a dance? Come on, let's give the Lord some. We been to go home. We ain't gonna keep you all day. I'm through. We been to go home. Come on, somebody give the Lord some. The church is open. Uh, I don't know what. Anybody here that's ready to give their life to the Lord for a gift? Lord, I give my life to you. I'm not just giving my preacher or a preacher in my hand. 